Hello everyone. I'm Christopher Polman, Professor of Public Law at Lorraine University Metz in East France. You may have heard about the recent rise of Islamophobia in France. The term was created by the jurist Alain Kellien in 1910. It may be contested for minimizing the problem, but that is not my issue here nor do I want to question Zoom of Californian billionaire Eric Yuan. With my modest English, I would rather like to draw your attention to a vicious spiral of isolation, violence, and humiliation, which could endanger the Muslim population and more generally social peace in France and elsewhere. Surely you are aware of the murderous attacks which have been committed in the name of Allah since 2012 in France. The big question now is whether these religious motives reflect the causes of violence. Let's ask the German sociologist Klaus Teveleit, author of Male Fantasies, which is about Nazi violence, and of a recent book about the broken inner world of contemporary assassins. One may also quote related research by Bessel van der Kolk, The Body Keeps the Score, and Peter Levine, who has written numerous books on healing trauma. Tableite shows that the killers Nazis, Islamists, Christians, anti-communists live their corporeality as fragmented and chaotic, and joining them to crush human life in order to seal their torn bodily experience. Their ideologies are interchangeable, says Tivelite, and cannot be considered as causes. However, they don't want to be reminded of their personal history made out of emotional loneliness, failures, and humiliations, and prefer to dignify themselves as they are in vengeance against society, only a widely despised idea, belief, or other reference will appear noble enough to them. It is here that individual destiny connects to the global picture. In France, even more than in other Western societies, Islam has been steadily devaluated now for more than 30 years. If this was first due to right-wing movements, public authorities have become more and more active against Muslims. In 2004, a huge majority in Parliament adopted a statute prohibiting wear of religious symbols at school, which was in fact directed against the Islamic headscarf. And in a few days, the government will present a new bill against separatism. The only currently visible separatist tendencies in France are segregated housing, schooling, and tax paying amongst its most wealthy inhabitants. But the bill does not deal with this widely known problem. Instead, it officially points to Muslims as a threat to the country. It will be disclosed on December 9, 2020, in order to mark the 150th anniversary of the still valid law adopted in 1905, which separates churches from the state and institutes the principle of laicity, secularism. That is where some details, some legal details are essential. The government likes to pretend 
that its action is meant to accomplish laicite. In reality, it does almost the contrary to what says the text of 1905. There, we see reaffirmed the freedom of thought and of worship for everyone, without exception, including school children, which is Article 1 of the law. In order to guarantee this, public authorities have to stay neutral in religious affairs, Article 2. With the help of the 2004 law mentioned before, a fundamental semantic change has operated. Religious neutrality no longer just concerns government, but is extended to more and more categories of citizens in the public space, starting with pupils and profiting of the, of the apparent similarity between public authorities and public space. As any freedom, freedom of religion is of no use on the toilet cabin and only makes sense in public. That is why the 2004 law is contrary to laicity. But what is the reason for this restriction of religious freedom? Here we will enter identity politics. As many other countries, France is in an increasingly deep multiple crisis. From the first oil shock of 1973 until the current pandemic, French people therefore feel the need to reassure themselves about their identity. And one of the surest ways to confirm an identity for communities as well as for individuals is to find some way of measuring what one is not. I quote the US sociologist Kyle Erickson. Indeed, it is the boundary that defines the group, not the cultural stuff that it encloses, to quote the Norwegian anthropologist Frederick Batt. In the past, the idea of the Grande Nation could thus be derivated from the colonies France thought of civilizing, or from a hostile other, such as the Germans called Bosch, the British roast beef, or Jews. None of these groups is still available for national demarcation. That is where News, that is where Muslims are helpful, especially when they can easily be recognized as such, thanks to their outfit or their halal diet. I would claim that the stance against Islamic symbols renders the practice of this religion always more visible by pushing more and more Muslims to reappropriate these symbols, and especially the veil, they are stigmatized with. Much more than a scapegoat, Muslims thus replace the traditional pillars of negative identity construction. Perhaps they are about to become the French equivalent of blacks in the United States, and Islamophobia gets a respectable racism, quoting the French sociologist Said Bouamama. Let me sum up. The link between massacres and Islam is purely contingent due to the bad image of Islam in the Western world. But in a strange complicity, both killers and governments have an interest in speaking of Islamist terror. Killers get rid of their self-image as losers, and governments can externalize the problem of brutalized 
brutally socialized youth. That is make responsible religion instead of violence and families and society, and thus reaffirm national identity. Together with numerous, numerous other authoritarian tendencies, this quest for identity will intensify as President Emmanuel Macron is in competition with extreme rights Marine Le Pen. He will probably face her again at the next presidential election in spring 2022. The danger of such identity wars is that the dynamics of moral panic can't be controlled and might possibly lead to persecutions of Muslims in France. In the early 1940s, my mother, employed by the Third Reich's counter-espionage in various European countries, was profiting from the expropriation of Jewish families. My present engagement for laïcité, which in my eyes stays the most valuable frame for mutual respect and understanding, is only a small response to the responsibility my family history has placed me in. Thank you. <laughs>